Frankfurt Board of Commissioners April work session. Today is April 10th, it's 5 p.m. And I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Commissioner Thompson. Present. Commissioner Unger. Present. Commissioner Waldridge. Present. Commissioner May. Present. Mayor Wilkerson. Present. And before we get into ceremonial and recognition, if we could take a moment of silence for the senseless and tragic shooting today in Louisville and for all of our friends at Old National Bank in the city of Louisville. you all. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to the board for any other. Um, I have a couple. So yeah, thank you for taking that moment of silence. Definitely. Um, I've been texting with the mayor there and um, he finally came up for a little bit of air this afternoon and responded back. So just continued prayers for that Louisville area um, and all of their staff and community. Um, also, um, just wanted to say congratulations to Kentucky State University students. Um, they had their honors convocation this past week, uh, and um, the mayor's award was given away to Savion uh, Briggs at Kentucky State University. Um, the mayor was there to represent and hand that there. It was a great ceremony. Um, though Kentucky State has been in the news for negative as far as financials, one thing that I can say that, uh, and I'm sure the mayor will agree, the room was packed. It was almost standing room only. And it's been a long time since I've seen the large Bradford Hall packed. And it was also amazing, and I'm sure the mayor can uh, agree that though their numbers may be low right now, most all the students had awards. It was just great to see how many people were on the student, uh, the dean's list in 2022 until present and those that are walking away with awards. So they may be small, but I tell you, these students from Kentucky State University, they're going places, they're going to do things with their lives, and they're mighty. So congratulations to all the awards there, and thank you, Mayor, for giving that Mayor's Award out once Happy again. Um, and then congratulations, uh, Brooklyn Miles. She's put her name in uh, to maybe transfer out, so we wish her the best of luck in wherever she lands next. And uh, thank you to our staff, um, Katie Beard, for getting her sign put up on both sides of Frankfurt. So now we are uh, welcome to the home of Brooklyn Miles. So super excited that she's got her chance to be seen. And uh, we're going to continue pushing forward all that we can to make sure people get their accolades. So congratulations to Brooklyn. Um, last but not least, um, I just want to congratulate uh, a committee I've been working on uh, for a while. Um, we are up and ready to run, so thank you, Bobby, for putting it up there. Uh, we're called Swim With Purpose, and just want to congratulate them. We are having a press conference on April the 19th um, to push this off to the community. Uh, the community has been pushing for YMCA for a pool, and um, sometimes when we get working, sometimes the community gets pushed out of committees and things, but this is a committee that allows the community to have a say and gives them a link to be able to support pool. Um, this money will go straight toward any repairs for the Kentucky State Pool in this, uh, as we are moving forward and working with Kentucky State uh, in this pool for our community, Kentucky State students, and possibly the YMCA eventually. Um, the monies here are going through the Bluegrass Foundation, um, so they are secured. Anything that was to happen to Swim With Purpose, these monies will then be left over to Parks and Rec uh, for pool purpose only if anything happens uh, to this group. So super excited, uh, hoping everyone will go to the um, www.swimwithpurpose.org and donate and help out and show your love for Swim that, uh, that we need a pool. Uh, Bobby, if you could scroll down really quick. As you can see, um, this right here is a before and hopefully an after that we can get there. Um, and then it keeps scrolling. Sorry, I'm just going to keep talking. You can scroll. Um, and right now, as you can see, we've already raised $127,000, um, a little over. And so if you could scroll on up, here's our board of directors, uh, Sam Taylor, uh, Jamal Jackson, Barry Pop, and Nick Belcour. And we're also adding... Um, a swim person here, Kelly Codwell, has not been at it, but she sent her information, and she will also be the community side of that. So we're super excited. This is what we've raised probably in two weeks, uh, making great connections, and we look forward for everyone to joining us in this group. And if you have any connections, please let us know. But congratulations on just this coming together with the community and these uh, board of directors. So thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner Wadridge. Mm -hmm. Any others? I'd, I'd like to, Commissioner Thompson. I'm going to brag on one of my bonus kids real quick. Uh, her team finished uh, first at the Shelbyville uh, Relays uh, last week, and they ac actually scored the fastest time in the state for the year. So they are ranked number one in the state right now. So um, Kate and the girls from Franklin County High School are doing really great. And number one. Number one in the state right now. And so uh, we're, uh, she, Kate's ranked in the top five in four events. So we're um, really proud of her. So. What's the event for the number one for the group? Uh, four by 200. Four by 200. Oh, that's a good race. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any citizens' comments? I didn't see anyone. There's, there's no okay. okay. All right, we'll go to staff reports next. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I uh, want to welcome Sean Pickens up, our Director of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Sites. Give us a little update on some needed boat repairs at Blanton's Landing, as well as some possibilities over at Riverview Park. Yes, our boat docks at both Blanton's and Riverview, um, more so Blanton's than Riverview, need a little bit of love. Um, just with the repeated floods and floods and more floods, they've just taken a beating over time. And yeah, you know, we're not really you know, with the help of public works as well as the fire department and the, the whole city police department. We all get out there because we don't really have the equipment. We really don't have the necessary, you know, knowledge or stuff to really take care of them the way they need to be taken care of. But really the biggest problem is those docks, they're not really designed for the river. They're more designed for, you know, lakes and bodies of water that don't rise and fall and have strong currents. So, you know, just, they're just not... You know, they're, they're heavy-duty plastic, but they're just not meant for the ups and downs and the current and the beating that they take. So, so we're just kind of always patching and, and maneuvering and re, reattaching and up and, and the, the gangways get stuck underneath, which is what you'll see now at Blanton's. It gets, then it gets wedged. The water goes up and comes back down and gets wedged. So it just, just causes a lot of problems. Um, but hopefully, knock on wood, um, we'll be able to get those kind of back in working order. Um, so we're going to start working on that. Um, I know my downtown crew has been working with um, my, uh, Public Works as well as potentially speaking with some, a couple other folks that kind of have in the community that work on docks um, to kind of give us a hand. It's kind of all hands on deck to get out there and get boats pushing and tugging and yanking and everything else. So, so we're, we're working on that. We're hoping to have Blanton's Landing kind of back in, back in working order in the next two or three weeks, give or take. Um, barring any more floods or heavy rain so um, so that being said we, we've had a request to move a portion of Blanton's Landing uh, down to Riverview uh, Park to, for, to make it longer um, Canoe Kentucky has you know you I think many of you know they've bought the the old KSU boat and have turned it into a tour boat um, so um, they've got that houseboat plus their other boat plus a few other the tours rocking thunder and, and other folks that come and do tours down there so they've they've made the request to move 50 foot um, at least 50 foot down to Riverview um, it's 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 not super easy to do that like it's the stuff I just mentioned you know trying to get it down there and get it reconnected and whatnot it, it can be done um, but I, probably one of our biggest hurdles is we're currently working on the bank stabilization project and reworking the bank uh, at Riverview, and we're we're, we're kind of moving along in that. Katie's been heading that up at Public Works, uh, but we're not sure, you know, exactly you know, how that will affect. If we move a, a piece of the dock down there, we'll have to add at least one or two additional uh, support beams to that, which will be in the area that we're going to be renovating pretty soon. So, um, you know, we'd be doing work down there, and we potentially have to rip all that out when the bank stabilization project goes in in the next. Yeah, hopefully next six months or so as we're working with FEMA on or that. hopefully so. in October. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. going to take place. So, so anyway, um, we'll get Blanton's Landing back in order. Riverview is already up in order. And uh, it won't be perfect because it, it's been bent. It's been, it's, you know, floods up and down. But we'll get it back as best as we can. Um, and then hopefully in the long run, you know, with all our downtown master plans and things like that, you know, hopefully we can move towards having a better dock system that can withstand the floods a lot better than, than these. Um, they're okay for the current purpose. Um, if, if the river just stayed nice and, and pretty, 
yeah, they'd be fine, but with our floods and stuff, they just, just will not hold up in the long term. So with that, I'll take any questions or, or follow Mr. up. Under. Yes, ma'am. So is Canoe Kentucky, um, will they have enough room at Riverview, or are they going to have to move one of the boats to Planton's Landing eventually, or yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, I don't know for sure. Okay. I, I think they'll have enough room. I think it's the... Um, you know, a couple of the weekends when it's all happening at once. Okay. And Rock and Thunder is there, and the Canoe Kentucky boat is there, mm -hmm. and then it's a nice weekend and other folks are out. That's when it kind of gets tight. Okay. Um, you know, on a Tuesday, it's fine. It's just on those those a few weekends where everything's happening at once where so it gets as tight. as long as there's communication, hopefully we can, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think we can make it work. Relieve some of that. Yeah, yeah. And have we identified a dock system for our type of river and what the cost of that might be Are there any other I, comparable I, I, cities with the river yeah i think in the blanton's landing comprehensive study um, as well as maybe the downtown plan as well i think there's some options out there um i don't I don't know exactly how many there are but i mean it seems to me the blanton's landing it was the ones on the concrete pillars that you kind of see where they can it can rise up and rise down with the water what you know? louisville has yeah basically yeah. what louisville has yeah. Um, Owensboro. Owensboro. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> are there other options out there that are cheaper or whatever there might be? Um, but that seems to be on fluctuating, big fluctuating bodies of water. That seems to be kind of the leading system out there. So, so one good transition, hmm. too, in speaking about this is that when we talk about the Broadway Bridge MOU, <coughs> You know, we want to invest funds using the one percent from the invest uh, the insurance premiums tax that will be for the downtown master plan and parks master plan. Some of those funds can use that we can definitely shore up Riverview Park, um, and then identify and implement a stronger dock system. Not before this summer, because we know that we're going to have to rip everything out in October when FEMA comes in to do mm -hmm. to shore up the bank side and put in the extra rip wrap and as we do all the other additional work at Blanton's. Yeah. But I could see that happening for the following summer. Yeah. We have some big improvements. <coughs> yes, Commissioner. How's the geotech is how's that coming along? I know that it, that's a huge, you know, factor in a lot of that's going on in the river bank. Um, but you know that ninety degree turn in our river is, is quite an obstacle. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about at Blanton's? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They've started the, well, they'll start the work shortly. We've signed the, the contract. Mm -hmm. They have a set time period that we'll definitely have it done before. By the end of April there, but we won't have the report. Yeah. They'll finish the work by the end of April and the report will be ready hopefully in May, mm -hmm. but definitely before the, as we look at the property and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Sean. Yep. Uh, next up, our finance director, Alicia Boyd, is going to update us on two different things. One, I think there's a handout at your chair you should see about the investments by the Kentucky League of Cities, what um, Alicia presented on before in January. And then two, an update on the telecommunications tax and remaining tourism rental funds. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, so the sheet that I provided each of you is the most recent sheet that I was uh, provided from KLC on how their investments in that investment pool are tracking. So uh, this is just another step in a series of uh, important steps that the Commission has taken starting all the way back over a year ago with creation of the Finance Committee. Uh, you know, minimum fund balance policy, which in my mind is one of the most important things that the city's done, um, along with updating our investment policy. So, um, as if you'll recall, KLC came, came to one of our meetings in January and presented on their investment program. We've got the resolution in place saying that uh, authorizing the city to join the program. The Finance Committee met in uh, February. And um, we're going to bring a, a recommendation to the to you guys in uh, the voting meeting in, on April 24th, recommending that we that we invest two million dollars in the KLC program. So the goal for this two million dollars is to not touch it. We want it to be part of that minimum fund balance that we need to maintain. 
Now, what we can do is we can invest it in, uh, you know, a couple of different ways. We're not just going to put the entire amount in there and invest it all in one type of thing. There's, there's multiple options. There's a bond fund. There's equity fund. Um, there's a dividend fund. There's money market. So um, what, I'll, what I'll be asking is that you guys approve the $2 million, and then I'll work with the PNC folks. They, they run the program for KLC and work with them on uh, some different um, ways that we might be able to invest the money, uh, given our needs, which in my mind, unless you tell me otherwise, our needs would be we don't want to touch it. We want to let it grow and become part of, obviously to be, be part of that, but we want it to grow, to, to continue to grow our minimum fund balance because that will grow over time as well, given how we've worded it, you know, three months of operating expenses. So um, I'll take any questions on the KLC investment program, um, if you have any. That, but that'll be what we'll bring to the voting meeting. So, okay, good. Good, because I'm, I, I have to say that I've been looking at the budget pretty much nonstop for a couple of weeks, and my mind feels like it's a little bit mushy right now. So, um, Well, I appreciate it. Um, I sat in that committee, last committee, just yeah. to get a little bit more information, or I probably would have had questions. But <laughs> it, being able to sit in that committee and listen to some of the conversation, it helped me understand a little bit more good. and see things yeah. going right. So thank you. Good. Good. Well, and that is an important committee, so I'm very, mm -hmm. I'm very glad that the commission agreed to start that committee. Yeah. Um, okay. So the second thing I wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention, this is more along the lines of the budget. So I, I still feel a little bit mushy in the brain, but I'll do the best I can. So uh, I provided you in the email copies of our most recent audit, just the just the page you needed to see, obviously, um, and we have. Uh, what we call the tourism building, and that's the old building that was sold a couple of years back, and uh, that was where all the rent was going at that time for the tur from the tourism uh, building rental. And um, I think the goal at that time was to use that money to do things that the building might need had to have done, like roof or things of that nature. So. Um, We've got a little over 16000 left in that account. And as you'll recall, uh, one of the things I've also let you guys know is we have a ton of bank accounts. So what we, you know, we're trying to condense and we're trying to close out any accounts we don't need and move the money to where it's more appropriately needed. <coughs> and this would be one of those things, the tourism um, money that was left over, a little over 16000 And as you'll recall, we've been funding some small events, helping out with some uh, events here and there, Common, Common Fest, Comes to Mind Bourbon on the Banks, the Jazz yes. Festival, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. So uh, what I'd like to do is to take the money that's in this account, close this account out, and then move this money into the general fund to help fund some of those events in fiscal year 24. We do have some that are budgeted. Um, it won't fund a big, huge amount, but every little bit will help, so we'll be able to fund a few events that way. And then the other thing, um, so I know we've had tons of discussions about E911 and how, um, you know, it's costing our general fund somewhere between gosh, six and seven hundred thousand dollars a year for the dispatch center. So um, back in 2019, this telecommunications tax account was started. Um, I went further back in the audits, and that's the most recent audit that I can tell that this fund was established. And um, we spent some money out of it in 2019, but we haven't spent any money since then. We get approximately $32,000 in revenue, and by the end of the fiscal year, we'll have around $150,000 in that account. This is another one of those that what I'd like to do is to completely close this account out, get rid of this fund, move this money into E911, the restricted fund, E911, not the general fund, the restricted fund, Fund 590. And um, I provided you with the KRS that talks about what we can do with that money. And it says uh, one of the things, obviously, is public protection. Um, and uh, I feel like 
that's an important use of that money. And since it is restricted monies, and since we do have a restricted E911 fund, um, that's what I would recommend we do. So I'm going to bring that recommendation as well, and that will impact fiscal year 24. We'll, we'll make that as part of the fiscal year 24 budget and show that money being transferred in, eliminate this account and this fund, and then that, that revenue will go to fund the, dis, the dispatch center moving forward if that's what the commission agrees to do so does anybody have any questions no okay we could use that for public safety uh yes sir it's in the krs 136 648 and i did in fact uh confirm with uh solicitor ross on that as well and uh, public safety public protection public safety that's one of the one of the things we can use that money for how much is in there well, um, I guesstimate, uh, well, we might actually have a little bit more than 150000 Currently, at the end of March, we had 148000 and some change. So it might be a little bit more than that. We'll have three months of a little over $2,700 in revenue and then what little interest we earn on it. But uh, that's what I'd like, like to recommend that we do with that. Any questions? Commissioner Under. Yeah, I just have a comment. Thank you. I know this has sort of been some tedious work closing out accounts and cleaning up all of yeah. the bank accounts, but you know, these are great ideas. So. Well, well, thank you. Thank I do you. appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Mayor, did you want to ask me a question? No. <laughs> right. I'll save it for later. All right. Yeah, he'll thank save you. it for later. You're thank doing you all what so you much. You said you were going to do when you came in, so. I'm sorry. I said you're doing what you said you were going to okay. do when you came in. Okay. So I appreciate okay. it. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Discussion items. Thanks. We want to welcome uh, Bill Cole um, tonight to come talk about um, the Grand Theater. And um, Bill, I just want to make a, a quick clarification of what you said over. Thank you for the kind words. Um, but I do want to clarify, I didn't say there would be no funding for subsidies. I just said there were going to be reduced funding. So I wanted to make that clear that we are reducing, but we're not eliminating um, subsidies that we provide for nonprofits in our community. And, um, you know, we're encouraging people to partner and support of our strategic plan and that we're, we have a new system, a different system moving forward that will start in July. So thank you. Get yeah, yeah. and just friendly, it's just a quick reminder that you have five minutes, but that doesn't include I do my best. I think it should take me seven, but maybe y'all give me a break on that. I guess first, if we could see the uh, statute that I had, because I wanted to. Well, so yeah. well, that's these are the very end. That's Sons of Maestro, the show we had. We got a South Arts grant. That was at the end of my presentation um, for these guys from South Florida. Start out classical violin, and, 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 uh, uh, and that's enough on that for the end. But um, we had 263 kids from Second Street come to that. You saw them, and the, that front row was the first grade. Oh, wow. And they were up the entire time. These guys, Umoja and uh, uh, Malcolm McNeish, uh, Daddy with and the Ma Maestro or Mistro, uh, he uh, uh, is from Jamaica, the moms, Barbados, and they have uh, been training but they got into this deal with moving more toward hip-hop and violin there's a band called black violin that's real famous they're like their big brothers and mm -hmm. it was a pretty amazing show and we did have ksu uh, i think 30 some that evening and then we uh, gave 39 tickets to the lyric theater in lexington to come over to that uh, mm -hmm. but anyway so that that's that was at the end of my thing but i wanted to see the statute if we could that i wanted to show you all unless you don't have it or we, all we have a copy of it. Yeah. Okay, you have a copy. Okay, all right. Well, none of you all were around when we worked on this in 2005. Uh, initially, we thought the city was going to do the yeah. do the uh, uh, room tax thing that ultimately the county had to do it. So we uh, we were successful in getting the levy. And it's as you see, it's very clearly that a two percent tax can be levied to support either a convention center or a performing arts center that is either public owned or a nonprofit and I had been working on this and we felt that the most economic efficient way to do it was as a nonprofit and not as a government owned facility that and and we were able to get that vote passed the financing then was used for the renovation of the Grand Theater that we completed in 2009 so 
Anyway, just that's kind of a preface, and with, there had to be a finding made by the county, by Fifth Third Bank, both that did the financing that we were uh, promoting tourism in the statute required to do that. Of course, we think we do that along with a lot of other things. But so we, we built our program until the final of uh, the year that ended uh, 2019 up to 134 events for 18,000 people, and then we had COVID. And we, in the year ending um, in uh, 2021, May, our fiscal year ends May 31, we were knocked down to 3,500 people and uh, uh, a 95% reduction in our revenues uh, from ticket sales. We came back the following year and we, uh, uh, we did uh, um, 9,000 and uh, uh, I think 83 uh, uh, shows. Uh, then we decided the year that began last June 1, we were going to in advance, and I told y'all when I made my presentation that year, that we were going to go ahead and do a season with 13 shows, spend over $100,000 on the arts, and go back to our investment of $30,000 uh, on advertising on the basis of we were going to rebuild and it was going to be difficult because we didn't have the revenue base coming in. And so that's where we are now. We're in the year that... Uh, shows that we're already over 12,000 and what I gave you all. We're going to get to 15,000 this year. We're going to be back to about 90% of what our revenues were, but we are running a deficit this year. So when I got the, whatever, whatever the results are on all this, when I got the letter, it was somewhat not the best thing to hear that there might be, you all give us 10, the county gives us 10, and then we get 10 from the Arts Council. Approximately South Arts gave us the grant and we're hoping to get a grant next year. Um, and that pays for about 20% of our overhead uh, we then plow all the sales of tickets into new shows. If we get more, if we do have more revenue, we're going to spend more money. We're looking at going up to 150,000 this year with 16,000 shows, 16, 000, 16 shows in our season. So that's our goal to do that. We we feel very good about what's happened this year, but we do need to move forward and do it. Um, in terms of what your letter said. Uh, the South Arts thing. We didn't ask you all for money to do that. South Arts provided it. We also uh, are doing our, our stories from the balcony, and we've uh, uh, these are interviews that occurred back during the developmental period with people who had been either sitting in the balcony or with someone uh, downstairs and knowing about the grand being in 1941, the first uh, integrated theater, though integrated if you were upstairs. Uh, but we want to move forward and do a film of that back to cultural equity and diversity. Mm -hmm. We're not, well, I think Joanna already asked you about money for it. You said there would be no money for it, which we're not asking you for money. This is what, well, this is what I'm all sorry, art that's centers. Tom, Bill. I, for, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, it's Todd. That's Todd. <laughs> oh, that's Todd. Uh, it's, uh, oh, do you want to finish, finish your, your thought? thought? Yeah. Well, if Would you mind finishing your thought? I'd like to if you let me. Well, the, the piece, so we're doing that and we're going to raise the money to do that. We're not asking the city for any money to do what I think will be a tremendous asset to the community to see the history of that. We're going to look at what happened in 1941. Who in the city said you can do that to Checkers Theater? Can you have black people in the balcony? How did this happen? And that's what Kayla Bush is going to help us doing the research on, and then of course, um, then of course the the rest of it. But then the other this year we're hoping to do collage dance. Collage dance real quickly. A couple of black guys from from New York City moved to Memphis to create a people of color dance company uh, ten years ago, and they have built now. Uh, an amazing company. I saw them both in New York and in, in, in uh, um, and, and, and the, they were at the Brown Theater back in uh, February, I think. And they do a show called Rise, where you see the show, the dancers, and they it's Martin Luther King's speech the day he was murdered. And of course, it's a Memphis company. The people of color in that are, is you know, they're from Brazil or Dominican Republic, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I guess a BIPOC is what there are. I'm, these are difficult things for me to know all this stuff. I've been learning it. But anyway, I think what we're doing is a tremendous asset. It is tourism. It is economic development, it, as much so as I say uh, the uh, 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 some of the other organizations you mentioned. Josephine's another one like us. I mean, they they are promoting tourism and economic development. But thank you all. If there's any questions, I try to answer. Questions for Mr. Cole? Yes, Mr. Yep. Thompson. Uh, Mr. Cole, thank you. Um, what What is your annual 
budget. I see in here that you have twenty. Um, you have twenty thousand dollars a month in overhead. I would assume that that is that accounts for two hundred forty thousand dollars of overhead <laughs> annually. Um, you mentioned that you have less than a hundred thousand dollars a year in payroll. Uh, what is your total budget that you all need to operate? Well, it's fully back. I'm not going to take a long time to not answer. I'm just saying we, as we add more shows, our budget is going to grow and more. We had gotten to about $460,000 was our total annual budget in the year, uh, the, the COVID, the year that ended May 31, 2019. Uh, we're going to get back to about 400000 in gross sales, but 350000 in revenue this year. Next year, I hope we get over 500,000. That's where we were going to be the COVID, the year that COVID it caused, uh, forced us to cancel five shows. I don't know if I'm responding to your well, question. Well, I guess my question is, I, I can understand your frustration in getting the letter that said there was going to be some cuts or maybe. But I'm being friendly, I hope. No, we are. Okay. <laughs> I'm more friendly than I mean, we're doing, every, we're doing all the yeah, stuff no. anyway. No, I mean, we're I, not going to turn I, you the keys into. No, no, into I, you. I understand. Trust me, I, <laughs> at this point. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm what I'm getting at is I just I'm wondering what is the total amount as you all go into your fiscal year of 23-24 that you all will what you all that the grand save the grand theater inc will need to have to fully operate and be able to have the 16 shows or 17 shows you're going to have during the year. Well we need to generate 500,000 in revenue. What does that mean? We hope to generate you know, 250,000 of it from ticket sales, 240,000 from the various other ways we raise money, like our annual fund, our, uh, 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 our sponsorships and all that, and the city and county, South Arts. And, and the, now that, is that not responsive? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, as we spend more on events, obviously our budget goes up. Sure, I understand. I, I, I'm just, I'm trying to get a feel of what it is that, that you genuinely need from the city to, well to I mean my more. view is we need ten thousand dollars what we've had to go along with the county's ten if you all cut is the county gonna cut you know and and it will make the rest work we'll get sent stories from the balcony done we'll get collage dance we've got a South Arts grant for nine thousand dollars for a very expensive show because there are 15 dancers um, and um, I, but if I'm not responding yeah, you you did it right there that was yeah. okay exactly what we did. all right any other discussion See it, Pokey. Pokey. Yeah, there, you. Yeah, you already have your tickets, though. I right? got my tickets. There's only got 30 left. Thanks for okay. bringing Thanks, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for helping with Jazz Day. Um, Jazz Day. Thank you. 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 We'd like to welcome Penny P. <laughs> to Thank the you. microphone. Thank you so much for having me this evening. I have two guests uh, this evening that I want to, to introduce and, and really thank. First, Jonathan Kellogg, uh, who is our executive advisor and engineer for the K Kentucky uh, State Highway Engineer's Office and the Kentucky Cabinet for Transportation. And also Jason Suwala, who is the deputy uh, highway engineer for the state of Kentucky. So thank you both for, for being here and, and for working with us um, on this project, which we're all very excited about. Um, I'm coming before you this evening. Uh, with a draft memorandum of understanding with the cabinet for the new crossing at Broadway Bridge. Um, as you know, we um, passed a resolution in late 2022 indicating our um, agreement to, to move forward with the state in this endeavor. Uh, the legislature allocated $3.5 million for this project, and uh, this body agreed to allocate up to $2 million for this work and other Riverview Park area improvements. The Transportation Cabinet is the agency in charge of this project. They are the owner of the asset. After completion of the new crossing, the Cabinet is going to transfer ownership to the City of Frankfurt, and we will then be responsible for maintaining the bridge. Many of you have asked what the annual maintenance costs are and what the insurance is, and we've outlined for that that for you here in this memo, the annual insurance cost is around $10,000 a year, and we can expect annual maintenance cost at a minimum of $13,000 per year, plus the need to create a fund 
allocating a significant amount of money in order to keep the asset up to date, in order to keep all the maintenance, um, all the maintenance as, as is necessary. Mm -hmm. And so there's a responsibility that I want to make sure everyone knows about, but this, as you know, is an important part of our Kentucky Riverfront Development Plan from 2009, our 2018 Master Plan, our 2020 Parks Master Plan, um, and was part of our July 2021 Stakeholder Survey. We've had broad support for an increase in access to the river, uh, areas in which to view the river, um, as well as trails. And so I come to you with this memo. I encourage you to ask questions, um, and I ask you to join the cabinet uh, in advancing this project. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Unger. Um, I just want to start by thanking you guys for being here um, and working with Penny and city staff on this. I mean, like I told you earlier, this is um, one of the projects that is really one of the reasons I ran, you know, connectivity, working on riverfront development, um, trails. So I'm, I'm just so happy to be sitting here looking at a draft MOU for this bridge and figuring out also how we're going to um, hopefully, if this comes to fruition, be able to pay for maintenance um, in a smart way, create a fund that people could donate to, that we yes. could continue to annually put money into so that we can um, use that bridge for years to come because for about 30 years of my life, it was closed. So, yeah. We did, we did here. create um, a Parks Foundation. As you know, you created a Parks Foundation and people can already give to the foundation and many have. Um, it's put lots of new initiatives um, in action in Frankfurt, such as our Urban Arboretum uh, benches and, and, and other um, added amenities at Dolly Grand Park. And so this is another way that people who really have been excited about this crossing at Broadway can get involved by giving to the Parks Foundation and making a, a memo note that it is for this project. Mm -hmm. This is a community project and it's going to take all of us to make sure that we have this asset in perpetuity. So mm -hmm. people will have to join us in that effort and, and uh, I'm excited to, to talk to everyone who's interested <laughs> and everyone who's been so vocal <laughs> about this project and get them thinking about uh, the Frankfurt Parks Foundation. Yes, Commissioner May. Ms. Peebler, thank you so much. Mr. Sawala and Mr. Kellogg, thank you very much as well for being here and taking the time. We really appreciate it. To me, it's more uh, than just the bridge, uh, although I'm very excited for that. Uh, I like the symbolism of the link between our agencies working together to make this community better. Um, these are the types of projects that we know from a private sector probably won't be high on someone's list to come in and just dump a bunch of cash into. So as communities and as leaders, we have to look for creative solutions and ways to continue to work together to fund these projects. They're instrumental. Uh, they, they are instrumental in the connectivity piece. Uh, the development that we're already seeing along uh, Taylor Avenue is, is fantastic. And I really, really believe that um, here in a few years, that whole area uh, of Taylor Avenue and beyond out towards Benson is gonna be a really shining star for this community. And again, thank you very much for your work on this. We appreciate all of our partners here. Okay. I have just a couple quick questions. Um, Ms. Peebler, I see in here that, hi, Penny, how are you? Um, I see in here that um, the uh, insurance for the asset would be ten thousand dollars. Is that an annual cost? Or it is. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, it's a rider that gets added to your policy, um, okay. and it's just another piece that's identified in your public work, the things that you own. Um, Second thing is, um, in November of two thousand twenty-two, and, and I'm asking for historical sake because um, I, yes. I wasn't I wasn't present, but the the um, two million dollars um, that the BOC agreed, um, along with the three point five million dollars that the state is uh, graciously allowing for us, um, I'm not great at math. But that's five and a half million dollars. Uh, where are we in the in the grand scheme of yeah. 
what it's actually going to cost to to do this right yeah so the process to. is that um, as the Broadway Bridge is a historical asset it will go through the 106 process as we've done with other assets here and determine um, that process will help us determine um, exactly uh, let's see I'm looking for the word how the process may go what's what what the uh, viable alternative. alternatives are alternative. and and we will determine the preferred alternative at the end of that process to, together with the state. And so the funds that we have allocated um, support the new crossing at Broadway. That's new piers and a new deck. And we have to determine um, at that time if it's possible to conserve the historic one trust span and slide that on to uh, that new deck and those new piers and that was a, an alternative that um, we all had discussed uh, going through this process and we've discussed in several different um, commission meetings and so those are the sort of economically viable options um, the it was determined that the total rehabilitation including the historic one trust span and uh, and peers were cost prohibitive based on their age, the state of their maintenance, um, and the cabinet's very thorough inspection performed by Palmer Engineering about the safety and efficacy of that. So I would like to answer your question by saying we have enough money for the new crossing and the new peers, and we may have enough also to conserve the historic one trust span and slide that into place. That's a wonderful structure that things like add alternates, like lighting packages can be adhered to, as you've seen on other walking bridges, ways to light up the city for different, um, different months, like Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Heart Awareness Month. And you see that in a lot of communities. But the 106 process is going to help us work with our partners at the state to establish what the what the preferred alternative is going to be. So, so I'm not expecting to, to, I mean, I'm expecting to spend the money that you've allocated. Great. Um, so my, my follow-up to that is I see in the, in the memorandum of, of understanding, um, and I understand that through the agreement, um, we will become responsible. Obviously, we're ensuring it. We will become responsible. Is there a is there a transfer of ownership from the from the from the Commonwealth of Kentucky mm -hmm. to the city at this point or yeah. at that point at that point at that point okay yeah so yeah. my next question at is, the end yes does that affect CSX or anybody that uses the actual railway on the next door uh, on the well there's one pier that the bridge sh that the current bridge crossing shares with uh, the railway the rail the railway bridge um, that pier that is shared is in good luck is in good shape excuse me good luck, good luck. <laughs> good luck is in that. is in good shape now there's going to be a lot of coordination um, that our partners at the cabinet uh, will walk through with us together because as you said CSX owns that bridge RJ Corman uses that bridge there's a lot to coordinate and the first step is this memorandum of understanding but that you know we will as I understand it and and Jason and Jonathan can correct me if I'm wrong but based on what we're planning to do we will not after the project be sharing any peers with the railroad bridge that's what we think as of now right. if you go with the option as, out, as you outlined so so CSX will continue to own left of the if i'm coming from Broad, mm -hmm. you know, broadway they'll continue to own left of of the walking yeah and use that they use it every day sure twice yeah right during the middle of a phone call always um so is is there a is there ever a possibility that any of our actions can affect csx or csx's actions can affect ours and I, and if so 
are we going to be coordinating with them at the same table? And, and Penny, I apologize. I'm not looking past you. No, I'll only, let you but to, I mean, that's my understanding that we're going to be coordinating. Yeah. yeah, and certainly we've been coordinating with them throughout the environmental process. So they were one of the first stakeholders that we engaged, RJ Corman and, and CSX directly. So they're aware that the, 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 the state and the city are moving in this direction, but they haven't been, you know, intimately kept up on, uh, you know, in the loop per se. Uh, but establishing this memorandum of understanding essentially gives us, you know, more assurances to move forward with what remains in the environmental process. And to Penny's point, we will definitely be engaging them again more, you know, uh, uh, consistently as we move forward to that. But yeah, to your point, yeah, there'll be significant flagging, and certainly when the project, you know, commences, there there may be um, some significant impacts. But we'll my last consultant to define that more clearly. Thank you. My my last comment is Penny great job you this is one of your first things that you said you wanted to um, help accomplish and you have gotten us this far in a relatively quick amount of time you uh, always amaze us with the work that you do um, I'd also like to say publicly that what what the Strong's and others have done on Taylor Avenue taking a risk on the fact that this was this could could happen potentially um, will uh, it looks phenomenal when you drive by when you just go, when you're just going up the hill, and so I, you know, I want to thank them, you know, for what they've done, and for others who have have really uh, put some money in there, as, and it's a risk because we didn't know if this was going to happen, and that that will only improve that area. So, so to them, thank you, Penny. Great job, thank you again. Any other discussion or questions? Well, that's Commissioner. Adler. So the plan would be to bring this to the next meeting and vote on. That's right, and it's okay. final form. Mm -hmm. Great. And thank you all for your work on this. I know a couple of years ago this uh, didn't seem possible to be where we are today where, with what we were talking about. So appreciate your extra effort to make it happen. And thank you, Penny. And uh, if I could summarize, we have a good, better, best plan. We have enough money for the good plan, probably enough for the better plan. Probably not for the best. You know, the best plan we're not even going to consider. So. And uh, you know, maybe we would consider naming rights for this if there's any corporation. Absolutely, and I'd be glad to give out my phone number to um, anyone who would like to have it. Please know, call me know. for the Frankfurt Parks Foundation. Know, I'd be glad to have a private meeting with you and discuss naming rights. Because that's uh, <laughs> what we need in the maintenance fund. So thank you all. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Penny. Um, thank you. Next up, discussion item number three. I want to welcome Chief Bowman and our community policing advocate, Shelly Hearn. Um, also want to th not only thank them, but also our fire chief, Jason Monroe. I know they've been meeting a lot internally. We've been talking about how to appropriately use the, hopefully this first tranche of other tranches of funding for opioid abatement. And also to say thanks to Charlie Kendall from Franklin County ASAP for attending. I know you've been leading the efforts for all of our community stakeholders, so appreciate it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I actually had a presentation with a bunch of 10 cent words in it, but I decided to bring Shelly so I wouldn't embarrass myself, honestly. Uh, the plan that the ideas and stuff that you have in front of you that we presented are, are ones that I put a few sentences into. She did the heart of the work because that's what she does. She's great at what she is. I do want to recognize uh, Corey Council and L. Travis also, uh, who are here in support, also part of the ASAP board. You know, we have to do this as a community, and this is just another one of those steps, uh, receiving the abatement funds uh, that will aid us. But I'll kind of kind of pawn it over to, to Shelly a little bit to kind of explain some things and, and so that she had, gives you a more clear explanation of her idea. My ideas. Your ideas. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure you guys are aware that Kentucky received about $842 million. 50% um, of that goes to our local governments. The other 50 goes to um, local agencies that can apply for grant funding. Um, and I do know that our ASAP group um, and some other local agencies have applied as a, as a, a, a group as a whole at, for those abatement funds. Um, just some of the thoughts that we had, um, we are going through the process of, and Charlie is going to be leading that, um, that cause through getting us a, to become a recovery ready community. Um, and I would love for him to talk a little bit more about that if we have opportunity to do that. Um, we also participated in the healing studies community, um, 
the healing community study, uh, which um, was able to identify their, their purpose is to reduce overdose deaths. Um, and certain, a, uh, certain communities were actually um, selected, and Franklin County actually was one of the first to go through that study. Um, they've identified several different things that were helpful um, in reducing overdoses. Uh, the biggest thing I think that, that came out of the study um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, but um, was just some of the uh, different ways that our, our community was addressing things. Um, Charlie, I would love for you to chime in on this as far as the study was concerned. Um, but they also provided a lot of, um, they're going to be providing a hard copy of our study at the end of the year or beginning of 2024. So we really don't have a whole lot to hand to you to be able to, to provide to you what those outcomes are. Um, but I think with the recovery ready community certification that we're seeking, it will show us if there's any service gaps that our community may have, and we might want to focus some of those fundings that we do receive into any service gaps that we might have. Um, some of the ideas that we came across as far as our department was concerned um, was just offering some suggestions on what would help us in our our job and, and our officers that are out there um, doing the frontline work. Um, just, I think training was going to be one of our main focuses, just in, in the trauma-informed care training. Um, and I know that through our micro-grant with L, um, that we are actually going ahead and starting some of that training for some of our officers that were interested in being part of that, um, stat that different type of programming. Um, some of the other things we were thinking about was uh, Narcan training for all of our city employees, um, providing sharps containers, things like that for our officers. Um, I know that through this, the healing study, um, they were actually implementing a barrier relief funding uh, that was providing support to individuals who were actually in recovery that would reduce any type of barriers they may be facing. Um, and we thought that that was something that we would like to continue to do through these uh, fundings. And that's just an example like paying for a utility bill, um, maybe paying a rent bill or helping out if someone's short just to help them keep um, stable anything to reduce, and provide some short-term Yes, anything you know, to funds. reduce them from any kind of barrier they may have that they're facing as they continue through the recovery. And you know, the, the, the big thing on the idea is if you look, you can look to them all. They're not enforcement. Mm -hmm. focused ideas it's about rebuilding mm -hmm. those that have lost their way and, and helping people get to the right spots and that's why uh, if you notice on on the the letter that we went on and kicked off our overdose response team we made our first visit last week first few visits there so mm -hmm. those are the key things in identifying to make sure and a lot of this is with the training making sure we have the officers and the staff that are well trained because if you don't know how to handle the situations and you don't have the proper tools then you're not going to use you're going to be unsuccessful so those are some of the big things that, that come out of this um, another thing that we think we were talking about was uh, creating a, a hub situation table um, those are identifying high-risk individuals in our community prior to an overdose that may occur um, there is a lot of training that comes with that. There's a, an already established program um, that would require our agency to be, uh, and through any other department agencies and any agency here that's providing a resource to be uh, trained in that and be able to focus on reducing those risks prior to any kind of incident. Um, and like Chief said, with our overdose response team, with that just kicking off, um, I mean, we. We were able to at least make contact with one good family and provide Narcan, harm reduction kits, that type of thing. So we are looking forward to progressing in, in making sure that we are making that one-on-one -on -one contact with individuals and their families. Um, like I said, there's so many different ideas. Um, it's just a matter of us trying to figure out which programs we want to go ahead and implement with the funding that we do have currently. Um, again, I would suggest having us go through the certification process just to also identify any gaps in services that we may have. Okay, any questions? <laughs> I'd just like to also add that what we've talked about internally, so the city has received $193,000 and that in speaking with um, the chief and Shelly, 
um, and also others that we identify some certain things we can do right now, like the trauma-informed um, training that Shelley was speaking about, and do some small steps first right now, budget for it in fiscal year 24, and then as we figure out how much more we will receive, and especially becoming a recovery-ready community, I think we'll be able to take on knowing that we can implement and fund for a longer term some bigger, very important initiatives, and that we can bring that forward to the, to the BOC to discuss during our budget discussions and um, before the adoption of the budget next year. Commissioner um, I, I was wondering a little bit about the, the budget. So, the, so we are receiving separate money than what the fiscal court is receiving, so hopefully we can sort of come together with the funding on this. Yeah, or some of it. Right. That's what I was wondering. You know, I'm guessing we've started the conversation with the county. And I think the county is very receptive to having those conversations, honestly, because, mm -hmm. I mean, we are Franklin County community, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I definitely think that that would be helpful. Okay, great. I don't think that the, one of the questions we have is that we're not sure how much we're going to see receive over the years. They're still kind of Correct. determining that. There's still yeah. another settlement coming up. This is our initial amount, so start some small things first before we learn more about how much we're going to receive over the, the long term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you all. Um, Ms. Hearn, this is one of the uh, reasons that I knew you would be a perfect fit for this position. Uh, Chief, thank you for all the hard work and efforts you put in. Um, I, I will say um, this is a good start. Uh, Charlie and everyone else, thank you for all that you've, uh, you, you've put into this. Um, I, I'm, I'm very concerned um, that we, um, we are still seeing an uptick in overdoses. And um, what, we, what we call our, our actual numbers versus our reported numbers based upon FBI stats and things like that uh, are always a little different, sometimes a lot different. But Chief Monroe, I, I think two years ago we were having at least one overdose every other day um, that you were treating and not all those were deaths but so when people see that there's two hundred thousand dollars allocated to the city of Frankfurt and I, I assume a certain amount to the county that's that's similar that um, this is not wasted money we ha we have a whole generation of kids that we are losing in this community um, and uh, and that that's scary and I see it every day the one thing I wanted to ask was is there a movement towards um, because I see in here that we can use the funds for diagnosis and treatment of mental health and um, capacity building for treatment and so I know that most of these folks are dual di diagnosis type individuals and so I know that life skills are, are great and follow-up is good but also that mental health component is so big um, in a community like ours that, that um, suffers um, from a, a large uh, number of people who need that. What, can, what is it, is, is there a plan or is there an idea or is there some way to do that so that it's not government funded treatment, are there, are there other organizations, whether they're 501c3 organizations or otherwise that can assist us in, in providing some of those services? I was going to say, I don't know if Charlie can speak to that as far as that some of our groups through ASAP um, that are already implementing treatment for the dual diagnosis. So I'm sure he could probably tap on the right ones that, <laughs> that I cannot think of the names on that. Uh, thank you. I'm Charlie Kendall, board coordinator for ASAP. Uh, you're absolutely right. Most, most individuals um, uh, suffering with substance use disorder have other co-occurring mental health issues as well. Uh, there's there are, and, and every one of the proposals that we as a group, the ASAP, and we weren't including these proposals in this bigger proposal that you all have uh, uh, so graciously uh, endorsed, um, had, a, had an element of the mental health with it, particularly with regard to prevention and, and also the early, early signs of identifying substance use disorder and moving people into treatment quickly, which is one of the, one of the remedies to allowing that problem to, to begin to be solved as opposed to go on and linger. Uh, housing is a, is a considerable issue. 
Um, and so we have, the, in our proposal, we had the women's shelter that was working on transitional housing, and they're going to have a component uh, that's going to be working on the mental health. There is a proposal, and I'm not at liberty to, to identify the, uh, the 501c3 that's doing it, but there's been some talking about creating a, um, uh, a residential facility that would specifically focus on the dual diagnosis, those are the individuals who have substance use disorder as well as mental health. And so, the, yes, everybody understands completely that that has to be dealt with. Great. Um, Last thing I'll say is that I know that you guys are working with Judge Manjit and Judge Olds and Judge Wingate and Judge Shepard and Judge Williams when it comes to identifying a number of these individuals as, you know, even though you know most of them um, before they get there. Um, is this, uh, are we seeing an uptick in folks who would not be considered Frankfurt natives um, becoming Frankfurt residents by, you know, just, you know, the nature of being here over, do we have a large number of homeless individuals that are coming into the population that we have identified um, that are struggling with these same issues? Un uh, unbelievably, most of them are Frankfurt um, residents usually. Um, in regards to, you know, overdosing, I've not seen any specific overdoses. However, the use is very high. Um, between amongst the, the homeless population and I know that the Simon House works very hard in getting folks into um, support groups they're out they're also a part of our ASAP group um, I know that that uh, having peer support specialists there in our jails or have we're still trying to figure out how to maneuver that um, to be able to pull people out of the jail and be able to go ahead and get them into transitional recovery so there's a lot that we could be doing more of um, but Understood. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you, you cannot use these funds for personnel or staff. That has a question. I think we could probably continue to ask. Some other um, like court counsel. It's possible. I'm not sure. I'd have to hire him away or, or give me hire another community policing advocate, <laughs> somebody that would just focus. Well, you know that had been in some of the <laughs> conversations. To be honest, is how to how to find that uh, <laughs> like, you know right? finding a second individual to work with Shelly you know mm -hmm. and it's great for using the funds initially to get that started it's it is a budgetary thought moving forward after this first now Somebody if we just continue yeah I mean if we continue to get money and it's enough to cover sure that's great you know mm -hmm. and I would love to have two uh, two individuals in this position and, and how will this coordinate with this so ASAP's getting their own funding right you know something I don't? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You've applied for your own funding, the 15-year funding, right? I'd, I'd be glad to right. receive that announcement. But if you if you did get your own funding, then we would have three yes. pots. Yes, yes. Yeah. None, of, none of the funds that we applied for are, are contained in this. Right. Got it. Okay. None whatsoever. <laughs> and, and the state dollars that we are asking for do allow for positions. Okay. And, and, that's, and that's one of the conundrums with the local funds yeah. is it's not a lot of money. On our, I mean, it's 16 years, but it's 40,000, 50,000. I mean, you can't, you can't do a lot with that in terms of personnel. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I will just say one thing. Since we've hired Shelly Hearn, I know for a fact of at least three individuals that Shelly and I have worked together on, and, but it's mainly Shelly and it was David Duncan, that, that Shelly has saved their life. I mean, they are clean and sober and they are nine months to a year you know sober because they're alive because mm -hmm. of Shelly and then she has taken the next step so she should be commended for her hard work <laughs> she does an amazing job and, and, and with these funds <laughs> the other the other good note about that girl. is the amount of when introducing Narcan with officers we've saved many lives on the scene yeah. all officers have that's, that's had to use it some of the equipment that we're looking at purchasing will continue to, to further that and hopefully hopefully one day we won't have to worry about overdose deaths or an overdose response team because you know we'll, we'll be able to be there and, and help prevent a lot of that. I just want to give a shout out to our entire fire and EMS. I mean they've been great in trying to support our efforts and getting this response team together so I appreciate them as well. So they do a lot of the hard work too.
Well, thank you guys so much. I uh, I attended a couple of meetings. I know I spoke to Shelley about this abatement in other communities, and you know some of the other communities, like you said, are really focusing on the training to make sure that we're all prepared. So I appreciate you guys putting that as the forefront to make sure that we're trained, ready to go, no matter who's out there or who answers that call. So and I also thank Shelley for continuing to follow up on people. No, nope, you get your you get your flowers. So we appreciate you, and it shows in our community. So thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Final discussion item, I'd like to welcome back Chief Monroe. Um, previously, he presented on the fire station, the need to increase. We didn't have all the information. We do have more information now, um, background information um, about next steps. <laughs> yes, yeah, so last minute you all asked me to uh, kind of dig into this, and this is, uh, I wasn't involved in every part of this process it's been going on for so long it's been through several BOCs uh, three fire chiefs a uh, few different city managers so we're kind of we're kind of learning this project together <laughs> uh, and one of the original questions was why was the fee increase so much and what I found out when I called uh, two chiefs ago Chief Eddie Sloan I, I spoke with him the original building was uh, around a 7,000 square foot structure single story two engine bays in the parking lot of Conway and second so that was the original two and a half million dollar project. So now that project has escalated, it turned into the feasibility study, the remodeling, all those things. And PickPack wasn't even a site at that time. We've acquired PickPack. They always thought that was a perfect site. So Chief Briscoe then, you know, pushed to having PickPack as a site of a new fire station. And now that all this in place, now that we have PickPack, all these things going on, it's turned into a ten million dollar project being a two-story elevators four engine bays we're up to about 23 to 25,000 square foot off the top of my head on the last uh the last drawings i saw so it turned into a 10 million dollar project and brand setters carol's fee is a five percent fee so it's five percent of the 10 million and then we've already contracted with them on that 2.75 at a 7.2 percent i believe it was and they took what we've already paid and contracted and the difference would be what we owed which is where those fees came from i don't know if y'all had a copy of the memo that I, yes. we, we did. so that's where the fees came in uh i spoke with uh the lead architect on this eric chambers and the percentages you see in there in the breakdown they were just the original percentages agreed upon so he just kept those percentages the same and added that difference is why some of them seem higher than others as far as the the increased cost in the uh, schematic design for instance 20% was the original fee. He just kept them the same in the contract. So that, that was where those numbers came from. And that also, it was a way for them to bill intermittently instead of billing all at once like they have been doing. All right, let's, let's get it going. <laughs> and now we can't just throw stuff at you. You got evidence let's, here. So let's, go. To, let's go. Let's uh, go. No. Um, so can can I go back and ask um, once again? Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't here for it, but um, the it's my understanding that the um, the project is now up to ten million dollars ish mm -hmm. at, at this point. Uh, it probably goes up every day as um, cost of things go up. What was the what was the department's um, desire with regard to the three stories versus the two stories? Because it's my understanding there was a very minimal. Um, at least percentage-wise, um, increase if there was to be three stories as opposed to two stories, and and I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I would much, it would be much easier to justify the increases in the amounts if, mm -hmm. if there was such a significantly. Uh, so originally this was a one-story project, right? And it went to they had a discussion between two and three stories. They were going to do away with our Bridge Street training facility and use that third story as the training facility. Uh, I believe 2020, 2021 was when they, the BOC voted to just go to two story. Okay. And that was because it was going to be cheaper to remodel Bridge Street and continue using that facility than to add, I believe it was almost $2 million. One I point. think it was actually closer to $3 million. It was closer to $3 yeah. million dollars yeah. to add that third story on. Yeah. So, so, and it was, I believe, only three fifty. dollars to remodel Bridge Street was what I believe the memo I saw right. was closer so to was 250,000. So much more cost effective to remodel Bridge Street for training. That's all that was going to be used for was a training center up top. Uh, is the um, is Brand Center Carroll um, able to provide the increased amount of uh, work, uh, whether it's through design, 
documents, things of that nature, um, for the amounts that they have now quoted us, or is there going to be an additional amount that they come to us and ask us for based upon this initial step one? If you will? This, this covers the entire project. This goes into the entire project. This will, they actually manage the project. They're on site. They, they go from start to finish on this project. So the construction administration would, yes. would be that. that yeah, they do the, the bidding process. They do mm -hmm. everything. And like I said, it is, uh, Laura and I spoke, or, and it was, we looked at some of these numbers, and some of them seem drastically high. You know, uh, 63000 for schematic design, we already have some. So when, when I spoke to him, he said that was, he just kept the same percentages, percentages. from the original contract. Mm -hmm. and, and it also helps us pay in increments instead of paying large lump sums. I would also like to add that we can do, you know, these, these costs can be um, taken care of when we do the bond, when we have, you know, you all mm -hmm. um, adopted that we'd have 1% of insurance premium tax to pay for the bond, which is about $850,000. Mm -hmm. So these costs can be absorbed, we can, um, through the, the bond process. Mm -hmm. I think we just have to adopt a resolution, make sure we include it. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Um, if this is voted on and approved, um, when will we see like a final design? Because I know when we had, I had my design meeting with Chief Briscoe mm -hmm. before he retired, um, we had discussed just in that meeting, maybe trying to bring the building out to the corner, mm -hmm. use all the space on the block, you know, make sure that we are keeping with the des city design of streets that just makes a little bit more sense. Um, yeah. And to use this. This well, I, so just wondering and, and we talked about we that. talked about that and and i had a concern on safety about it coming all the way out to the corner just because it, it kind of impedes vision when you're pulling out of the engine bay and there's not a lot of sight so i, I kind of had some concerns with that that i, I voiced to the city manager okay. uh but if, if that's something at the end of the day if that's something you all decide that's something you all decide my okay. biggest stance is i just want the inside footprint to be the inside footprint and but you're looking at six to eight months before you break ground on as far as once but the approval goes. Design, when do you think final that? design would probably be, I would say they'd give us two months out, but I can call before the a meeting, I'll have the exact time of that. So we would look at that again and- Yeah, I'm sure there'll be there'll be several that times again. that we get to look at those. Okay. And, and approve those. Okay. And like I said, they're, they're fully aware of the, the historical stuff downtown and trying to keep it the same. And uh, the way the public safety building looks, they know. Yeah. They that, understand, that they, uh, they the understand uh, when they were here at the last meeting, they understand that, you know, that's going to be a, a very important part of downtown. Okay. Thank you. And how much have we paid them so far? Uh, so far we have paid a hundred and the original was 182 and we still owe, I'm trying to remember how much we actually owe on this. We we'll probably owe another twenty thousand ish, thirty at the most. I don't have the number in front of me, but the original contract was one eighty two. And this says the budget impact will be three seventeen five total. Yeah, that, that's the difference. Thank you, Chief, for getting all this information. Mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're presenting welcome, it huh? so well. You, you guys are letting me off way too easy right now. I, <laughs> no, I would like to, you know, I guess my problem is we're not going to see the final design until they're well into this. I, I don't know if they'll be well into it, but. Uh, and we're going to be so far down this road, we're not going to have a way. We won't be able to go back. And you know, we're going to have, you know, this is, this is something we've got to consider now. Is that the spot? And, you know, what kind of design do we want? Because uh, these setbacks that we're putting on these just um, increased price now. Right? I mean, I know Second Street has been what it's been, but we just invested you know, how many millions of dollars uh, with the state's help and the federal government's help to mm -hmm. redo that whole street. Now we're going to put another government building on it. Mm -hmm. So I want should, it to at least fit the character. Should this be should this be a uh, public meeting to discuss, or should we should we? Discuss it right now, or no, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's like one of those. I'll know it when I see it. As far as the design, I, I know, and that's what that's what I'm afraid of. And and I'm, you know, like you said, the horse may be way out. Of I, I can I can have the exact timeline. I can have them express everyone's concerns. I'll, I'll I'll call Eric in the morning, and express the concerns to see how quickly we can start seeing designs once this is approved. Right. And that would be you all would have complete and total control over design of the of the, of the building. I mean, that would be. I, I've seen renderings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess to go to your point, Mayor, is that yes. you said we need to make a decision of whether that's the location, you know, as simple as that. 
and you know we've you know, I think there's still well, been that's but that's been decided. So. Uh, oh, it has. I know that's has. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, yeah, as far as that goes, that's uh, it, it's a uh, it, it changes ISO rating, to change response times if we start moving off Second Street, and moving right. locations. Right. That's what I was like, no. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I'm I'm just saying the first thing the mayor said was, is this the spot? Is this what we're doing? And and I think there's been discussions about those things mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. then. So, um, I think there needs to be a either a public forum or something of that nature to discuss that at some point. Um, I, I, um, well, I was confused there for a minute because I thought we were talking about moving and I'm like, that would really backtrack us. Um, I think we've seen some of the renderings on what it could be just like we did with the parking garage that we're working on in parcels B and C. So this, I would say that this would be the spot. If not, we're really doing a disservice to ourselves and backing up in our time frame of trying to put this bond out there and be able to pay this off and the um, the insurance premium that we raised to help do this so I, I think we need to continue to move forward in this um, and I think that uh, when you say that it's another government building it will be another government building there however we will have this building to see what we do with whether that's remodeling it for City Hall whether that's remodeling it this part or another part whether it's moving City Hall that's some of the options that we should have in the upcoming years on where we want City Hall to be and do we get rid of this building and allow something else to come that may not be a government building so I think there's a lot of options that we can think about but to be honest when you really look to where pick pack was and where this fire station is really going to be you really limit yourselves and what else could really go there except for the fire station it is mid it is mid second street it's on the right side of the bridge for all the folks in downtown it helps with insurance rates um, and then also when you really look at the building across it's probably not going to have a whole lot of work to it not a lot of people want to build something right across from that building you hate to say it but it's but it's true so i think this is a great spot i think we need to continue moving forward but i definitely want to keep looking at the designs and seeing what that's yeah. going to look like and just keeping the community abreast and along the way in this process so we know what it's going to look like mm -hmm. and, and feeling that they have a vision and we all have a it has to fit in it yeah. has to fit in down here that's all i have any others all right, so just uh, you want me to get the design, probably how long it's going to take to get designs, things like that for you? I think, we're at? well, first we probably need to come forward with the, the contract to approve that and then ask you for that a timeline and then knowing when the designs need to be improved, uh, approved so we can do a public hearing. So, that on I think that's the, the, the yeah, right. need contract on the next, next meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. Will that be a positive amendment? For 2023? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on to action items, we have a first reading. Looking for a sponsor. <coughs> sponsor. Yep. Sponsor. Sponsor. Our commission. City attorney. An ordinance admitting City of Frankfort Code of Ordinances sections 37.31 and 37.32 related to officer and employee pay structure, classification, and compensation, <coughs> and deleting section 40.57 related to an emergency preparedness coordinator. This ordinance amends City of Frankfurt Code of Ordinances section 37.31 and 37.32 to update COF salary schedule incorporated by reference to include the full-time position of emergency management director and delete section 40.57 emergency preparedness coordinator in its entirety as this position no longer exists. Any discussion on this first reading? Commissioner Waters? Um, I understand this is the first reading, and I would assume since this is the first reading in between now and the second reading, which would be in two weeks at our voting meeting, that there will be a conversation with the county that this will come to an agreement. We continue to try to say we want a relationship with the county. Uh, we continue to bump heads um, and non-agreements on some things, and I think we continue to try to push a square through a round hole um, and we have to stop. Someone has to give in for this communication. We've asked for meetings with the county. We continue to ask for meetings with the county for these, this purpose. This is a shared agreement with the city and the county. It should be a shared decision, not something that's met about for a couple of months and then we just do our own thing and offer a position before the county has actually agreed. I've spoken with uh, Judge Mueller uh, in this. He's not happy with this movement at all. I know that um, city manager has spoken with Mueller on a couple of times. I know spring break came up and, and things of that nature, but 
at this moment, I just feel that hopefully in the next couple of months, there will be conversations had on what the county wants or expects out of this position so we can have an agreement because this is a shared position. And right now the county does not feel that that's what's occurring. So we have, as the city, we have to look at how we want to be communicated with, how we look at partnerships. So therefore we're not always pushing stuff on them because we all know right now dealing with the county, sometimes it can be difficult and sometimes it can be very, very easy. But if we continue to push things, it's literally going to set stagnant because they're not going to want to vote on it because they were not part of the process. So I just think that we need to start having some more of those conversations. I know um, Commissioner Thompson asked at the last meeting for us to have some meetings. We do need to have, whether that's quarterly meetings or whatever, we've all said at one time we want to have these meetings. Um, so I just think that we need to we need to communicate so we can have these partnerships like this not be an issue and feel like we're in the middle when it comes time for voting. Thank you. Commissioner Thompson. Um, echoing what uh, Commissioner Waldridge just said, and uh, I would uh, ask for a point of information. Um, there, there was a question that was raised um, in our last meeting um, at the one hour and 17 minute mark. Um, I would ask that that question, which was, uh, uh, there was a motion and a second made. It was uh, not recognized by the chair um, that that question be called at this uh, point so that the um, members of this body can vote on that question. Would you like to restate the question? Yes, I would like, uh, I made a motion to direct staff to um, um, coordinate a joint city and county meeting um, regarding uh, not only uh, economic development but other um, joint issues that um, we are facing, including um, staffing issues and uh, the combining of resources. Right. Are we, we're still on the first reading. So are there any other discussion on the first reading before we go to this? No, but as a, as a, as a point of order, this, I can raise this question as a point of information at any point, even during this first reading. And that's why I'm raising it, because I think it's germane to the issue at hand, which is that there are, there are lots of discussions that are being had, and none of the discussions are being had in the same room. And I think that, um, I think the county would, ag uh, would agree with that. I think members of this board would agree with that. And I would just like the members of the board, as this is a germane issue, to um, have that question called by the chair and allow us to vote on that. Okay, so you're making a motion to do a joint meeting on and what? Last time was a motion to discuss economic development. It was. Not anything to do with emergency management mm -hmm. or any other mm -hmm. issues. So the motion now is to do a joint meeting to con contact the fiscal court to do a joint meeting on economic development and I, in any issues. So, so the, the motion was related to economic development. However, um, in the furtherance of that motion, I specifically stated that we had all discussed the need for having ongoing uh, city and county joint meetings, um, whether they were quarterly, and I even said at the time I thought they probably needed to be monthly. Um, and we, are, we were one-eighth of the way through our term. We had not had any such meeting or had one coordinated. Um, and so um, I would ask that the initial question uh, be made, uh, or at least pulled from whichever metaphorical table it's on, and uh, I will uh, amend that motion to allow us to discuss issues related to um, all staffing and uh, joint resources uh, needed between the city and county. Here we have a motion. And before we have a second. We're going back to the original second from the previous meeting. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. So you, you I think our city attorney and that. I, I think what I see, Mayor, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong if I don't get it. I think what we have here is that there has been many conversations within our board, whether that's at our strategic planning committee, whether that's with uh, when we did meet once uh, with the county um, at different times, there has been a need to meet with the county, mainly because economic development, uh, comp plan, um, uh, the staffing, uh, and shared positions. So, I, I think where we get foggy is people get a little testy because we threw economic development out there or KCDC or whatever that looks like. 
there's a lot of issues that we have that work with the city and the county. So instead of putting a title to it right now, we have been asking for multiple years and we have agreed at some time, whether or not you want to agree now, that there is a need to have a city county meeting. So I think, as I stated, if I'm not mistaken, when he did, and you did say economic development okay. then, because I did second that, because that is a discussion that we do need to have. Um, but I also made clear that when the city manager repeated what he said, I said that I second that, and I said, no, I don't think that it needs to be a question going back to the board on if majority wants it, we have asked for a meeting, and this board sitting here has said we want meetings in the past. They just never get scheduled. So maybe economic development has thrown people off, but I think the goal is having meetings, consistent meetings, whether that's quarterly or twice a year or whatever that looks like, to discuss what our partnerships are, how we can save, how we can do things together, and also make these hard decisions. KCDC being one of them, economic development being another, emergency management being another. All of these things that we can help each other doing, we're not going to help each other or come to an understanding if we don't get in a meeting. So maybe instead of saying dot, 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 this is what we're going to talk about. I, I spoke with Commissioner May just now. You know, maybe we say we're going to meet three, three or four times a year. And then, like he said, set an agenda for it. That's what we did last time. So we stuck to those two, maybe three things, depending how, I guess, large that they may be and we cover, and that meeting is set for that. It does not deter from those two or three things, and then we'd be able to move on. We have to help this relationship with the county. We have to, and we continue to bump heads. We continue to put this square in a round hole. And so we have to come somewhere where it's mutual, where we can sit down and talk about these things, because if we succeed, Franklin County succeeds. If Franklin County succeeds, we succeed. And I know, as you've stated before, and everyone on this board has said it at least once, this is a city that is in within its county. <clears throat> yes, we do need the city to step, uh, the county to step up in some areas and help fund some things that they are getting services for. That, my friend, comes along in a conversation. And so, yes, I will agree and say yes that we do need a meet. But I also think, Mayor, that goes back on you as previous meetings has said you need to meet with the now judge, which would mean Mueller at the time was Wells, and you choose what those two or three items are for that meeting and then we move forward on those two or three items and then so on. But we do need to have meetings because it would not come to these things right here that we're discussing, if that makes sense. So I am a yes for a meeting with the county. It is a necessity. It is something we've been talking about for years. You know, the judge and I can call a special meeting if that's something you all want to do. And we can narrowly define the topic so it's not a free for all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and the judge, we, we meet every two weeks mm -hmm. with the city manager. So uh, you know, some of these things are not a surprise. And you know, we, mm -hmm. we discuss the emergency management. But, um, and, and, I, and I don't think it has been the majority of the board that wants to meet. I know that's what you know, a couple of our commissioners have asked for, but it's not a majority, I don't think. Well, then... So, then I'm then, taking that under consideration. Well, then... Because we need to, it has to be narrowly defined the, before we get into a room and let everyone, you know, the grand stand. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's what yes. that turns into. That, that's I fine. I don't want to waste my time. That, that's fine. I, but we are. I want to, I want the question called then. I want the, I want people to vote whether we should be meeting with the city and the county together. And I want it on the record. And I want people, if they want to, to explain their vote. That's, that's all. All I, all I got today, and I sent it to you, Mayor, was an email that said, the majority of the board doesn't want to do this. I made a motion and there was a second and it was never voted on. And that's outside of Robert's Rules of Order. It's outside of any administrative rule. And so that that question is still open at this point. And I want it to be voted on. And and that's not, I'm not questioning your leadership or anything of that nature. I'm asking just for it to be voted on. That's all. Because when I got that when I got that today, I, I was kind of surprised because I wasn't asked if I, if, if I wanted to have a city county meeting. Everybody knew I, knew I wanted to have a city county meeting. So. I, you know, I, I think it's important that we know, I mean, obviously, Mayor, you, you may know that there is a majority of people that don't want to, to have a city county meeting, but I don't know that. And I think uh, to be completely transparent and um, under all the blue sky in the world, I think we need to um, flesh that out and uh, have a vote and um, go from there. And I think that would then address um, some of the concerns we have with um, the um, 
the emergency management director position, which I think is, is absolutely needed, and I think it absolutely needs to be fully funded, and I think it absolutely needs to um, happen, um, but um, I, I think we need to be transparent as a government. And to do that, I'm asking for that motion, for that question to be called. All right, we have a motion. <laughs> do you know what the motion is, Sean? To instruct the mayor to <laughs> work with the county judge executive to call a special meeting to address issues of mutual importance. Does that sound right? Perfect. That's what I vote then. Yes. Yes. And then you get to choose what we're. We're going to do. I, do I need to go back to the original call question? And, well, the question of I, meeting before last, or can I get another second, please? Oh, I did second. Okay, just now. Yes. No, I missed that. All right. Any other discussion on this? Yes. Okay, Commissioner May. I'm giving you, in this vote, the motion is to give you the authority to I'll schedule just... a meeting and narrowly define the topics before we all, before both agencies come together, organizations come together, and try to start collectively figuring out what we're going to talk about and solve. Is that correct? Yes. I would say yes. The mayor speaks for the behalf of the board of commissions. And I, and I have to, it's a special call meeting, so I'll have to call the meeting. And we all have an opportunity to narrowly define said agenda so it's correct. not free Correct. Absolutely. This has occurred before and was successful yeah. with an agenda, and we are only allowed mm -hmm. to talk about those items. I'm Right. Any other discussion? I, I just want to make clarity in, in saying that Commissioner Unger had said that she doesn't want to waste our time. Um, and I, I agree, Commissioner Unger, because we have other things and we all have lives and families. But I just want to make very clear when you're saying wasting time, whose time are we speaking of? Because if I go back and look into past previous meetings, we also wrote up and had staff also follow up that we wanted to put a seventh board member on the KCDC thing. That is still, I'm not sure if you're aware, that has not been done. But yet we no, wasted time of staff. That has not been done. I understand. But yeah. again, staff did that and it's just lingering because we did not do the appropriate conversations and try to get the county to agree on that seventh person. Again, we're also doing something right now that really needs the county's decision and saying on it, and we're allowing them to work. Also, in an email today, again, we received that, uh, you know, in regards to this meeting and the economic development, that it was a no-go. Then also, on number three, was KCDC, a, major a majority did not disagree and approach for the ordinance to be changed for industrial focus for KCDC. Again, that is a decision that needs to be made with that. We can make and we can try to rewrite ordinances all we want, but it's only going to sit stagnant until the county comes to a decision and agrees on that. So again, I don't want our staff to continue writing ordinances and wasting time writing ordinances. If we're just writing ordinances, it's going to collect dust because we can't communicate with this, the county. That's why I'm saying we need to meet with the county. So when they do, we're not wasting their time. They're writing ordinances that will suffice and be able to move us forward as a partnership, if that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to say we're, we're not one government. There's two governments in this county. Mm -hmm. We can all pay attention to each other's meetings and what we're doing. People do communicate. We can call each other. Um, and there was a meeting to discuss some of this first reading mm -hmm. uh, with the judge and maybe other members of the court. I don't. I wasn't in those meetings. I don't have to be in every meeting. And I also felt like um, the one meet. You know, I, I would have voted no on your first motion because it was only about economic development. Mm -hmm. I could go into that. I'm not going to at the moment, but um, I am supportive of looking at a joint meeting that is narrowly focused and we cannot get off track and, and grandstand. For me, it's about people getting out and, and just talk, talking, grandstanding and wasting time. That's where the comment came from. I like to be able to work together and move forward. Can I ask the Madam Clerk to offer a vote? Mayor, if we could, could we, could we restate the motion just 
and I think that staff, we just need it for the record. I just need to make sure. Or can I just call the special meeting? Do we have to have a vote? Can it struck me to call for a special meeting, call a special meeting? Uh, do we have to have the, mo no. the, the motion the mo is to instruct the mayor to okay. work with the county judge executive to call a special meeting on a narrowly defined agenda for both bodies to discuss items of mutual importance. Can I can I read back what I've yes. written down because I've written down a lot of stuff. <laughs> so this is Commissioner Thompson and then uh, Commissioner Waldron second. So to instruct the mayor to schedule a joint meeting of mutual interest. Board of Commissioners to narrowly define the agenda. To, to, to instruct the mayor to schedule a meeting, a special meeting with the county judge executive, to work with the county judge executive to schedule a joint meeting of both bodies mm. to discuss issues mm. of mutual Spring importance. 2022. Go back and look at that. Thank you. Okay. I call for a vote? I would call for the call question. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> It's all right. I think it was 2020. Trying to get it right. Is it, is it November 2021? 21, 21, yeah, because that would have been, yes. Okay. Okay, okay. I guess I'm going to go back and watch it. Okay. You ready? Okay. okay. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner Unger? Yes. Commissioner Waldridge? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Mayor Wilkerson? Yes. And that motion carries. So we are. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. And I think this will avoid the continuously talking as Unger Thank you. brought up. Uh, we're the first reading still is out here, out here. So are we anything we need to discuss about that? About what? The first reading, the emergency management. The it's already motion gone. was already made gone because it was germane to the week. discussion. So is there anything else we need to discuss? I thought we already moved past just, that. Just, no, very, no. just very quickly, the way that it's drawn up, uh, Madam City Manager, is that the, uh, the fiscal impact to the city would be what would be what versus what the county would total impact is approximately thirty thousand um, dollars right now uh, sharing in the cost of 25 75 percent um, for emergency management we share with the the county <clears throat> and actually it's kind of smaller than that because we get a pass through from the state of 25,000. Mm -hmm. um, the county has provided 25,000 and in years past, our emergency management budget is approximately $200,000. The other thing um, I would like to you know, articulate for the record um, is that you know, this was important. We've had several meetings. Judge Muller and the mayor have met with our emergency management director on a couple of occasions and it's timeliness because of being able to go from seasonal to full time given that our emergency management director needs to do this before the end of may so um that's why it was a sense of urgency um and also that we don't have other emergency management staff who have resigned so it's urgent nature and um it's an important i think uh, position to have as well as the funds to ensure of what we're doing. It's a required position. It, it is, and, and I, I, I fully agree. And that goes to the E911 issue that we, we did the tour last week on, mm -hmm. and I think that, that needs to be discussed as well because, once again, while they are not directly on, you know, together, those are, those are similar issues that need to be discussed so when it comes to funding. That would be the first topic. Okay. Love to. Um, any other uh, discussion? If not, we can move on to the I have one more thing on this, yes. uh, since we're still on this one, is yes. that um, when we have the full-time position, the will that be the only employee in emergency management that we will have at, at this, that time? Or will someone still be on the contract that we have? No, right now we will only have one full-time. We are in discussions, and we've discussed this with the county and, of course, internally with HR and our emergency director staff of how we want to move forward with having um, part-time staff versus full-time staff to be able to support especially the on-call nature of the job. So we haven't, okay. that's something we would bring back forth, but we've had um, okay. discussions with the county and internally about how that should look like. So with that comment being made, what I would share is that I think that if we're going to move forward and have someone join this position and whatever comes about, I think instead of doing the seasonal 
issue because we had this issue when Tommy was here. Uh, right. We waited to the last minute this. once again, and now we're saying it's urgent it again, but we knew what this contract is and what is the time off that we keep it where it is not seasonal to avoid staff forgetting about this particular thing and waiting for the urgency of it. And then we can keep them on as part time where we don't have to worry about that contract. That's the whole point of this because they're all seasonal. That is, uh, it's incorrect position to have. I would like to say I have been uh, bringing this up since January. So mm -hmm. we have been discussing this. What's the best way? Looking at multiple different formations. Mm -hmm. um, it was not, uh, no one forgot about it. We've been pushing, um, just we had to move forward. And yes. Our okay. emergency management director didn't forget. Nobody forgot. Um, okay. We've just been having the and it. trying to get it to move forward, and we needed to make a decision. Right. Thank you. And we'll move on to discussion of the tentative agenda for the voting meeting. Uh, the KLC Investment Fund, Broadway Bridge MOU, Fire Station Contract Amendment, EM Director Ordinance, the second reading. I'm forgetting something in that. Anything else? I think, I think Laura has a whole list on her board. Well, yes. <laughs> a, besides these other things. I don't know. Uh, those are the <laughs> that came out um, from tonight. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure I didn't read everything on the board, but one thing that would be great would be um, uh, maybe an update on where we are with the comp plan, making sure we're on board with that pushing economic development forward. We continue to bring up economic development. And in order to do that, we need to push our comp plan to see where we are at that. That'd be great. Any others? If not, we can move on to other business. If none. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. See you next time.